on it. Click on it. Yeah, you got to click on it. Click on it. Click on it. All right. So Wendy asks a great question. She's like, why is it in the Old Testament all these guys had multiple wives and concubines if God said that adultery was wrong? And as you look at the Bible, you see it in the very beginning. God said, this is really simple math. He said, a man will leave his family and become united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Really simple math. Two, one, not three, not four, not five, become one big glob of flesh, but just two will become one flesh. You see that reiterated in the New Testament. Jesus comes along reiterating that, and he says, the, again, a man will leave his father and mother, and he will be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And then it's, again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul says, because the times are evil, uh, because of temptation, each man should have his own wife, and each wife should have her own husband. 1 Timothy chapter 3, leaders who are supposed to set an example in the church, they got to be the husband of one wife, because that that's how it works. So the question is, if it was that way in the beginning and then it's in the New Testament, why is there this 4,000 year old gap where it doesn't even seem to be mentioned and even, even godly guys like Abraham and Jacob and David, why are, why are they having these multiple wives and concubines? Here's what you understand. Just because God doesn't mention it or rebuke it in the Old Testament, does not mean that it's okay or that he doesn't view it as wrong. In fact, there was a lot of stuff that the people in the Old Testament did that was wrong that God doesn't mention uh, because ultimately they weren't able to do it. So for instance, God gave them the command, the laws through Moses. And you look at all those laws and you're like, man, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in there to obey. That must've been really hard. Yeah, it was really hard. In fact, it was so hard that they didn't do it, right? Immediately, they began to just miss big chunks of the law, the stuff that God had actually given them. In fact, there's this king named Josiah who was about a thousand years after Moses who not only were they not obeying the law, they didn't even know where it was. And one day they were digging around in the temple and are like, look what we found. And it's just like, oh, that's God's law. Like we should obey that. They didn't even know where it was. And so they weren't doing the things that God had explicitly commanded them. In fact, if you look at the Old Testament, the breadth of it, it's, it's apparent that God is really just trying to get them to accomplish objective number one. And objective number one, first of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's his big objective. If you could just follow me and stop worshiping all these other gods, then I can teach you the rest and I can give you life and everything is so good, but they weren't even able to consistently even uh, do that. And, and so there's a lot of stuff in the Old Testament that are in, they're not obeying, and I think it, it becomes apparent as you look at the Old Testament, God's really just kind of picking his battles. Uh, it's kind of like this, if you were a teacher down in Woodhaven and Flat, Flat Rock and you had great students and you had a bunch of objectives, a hundred different things that you're trying to like get into kids' heads and stuff like that, that's great. And then all of a sudden one day you go and take a job at inner city Detroit and you're down there with kids and the discipline procedures have all broken down and, and you go in there and it's just chaos, right? Uh, the kids are selling drugs in the high school and fights are breaking out and everybody's cussing. And I mean, it just, it isn't working at all. Would you go into that situation with the same list of principles and standards you had in Woodhaven and Flat Rock? No, no, no. To begin with, you would choose your battles and you would put the most important stuff at the top. It's obvious in the Old Testament that it was a hot mess and that's why Jesus was so important because he came to the earth, he died on a cross, he gave us for those who believe in him the forgiveness of sins and he said, hey, I want to change you from the inside out right here and, and because of that he gives us his his spirit and his strength and his power from the inside out. And because of that, followers of Jesus now in the, in the new covenant or the new contract, we're able to actually do things that people in the Old Testament wouldn't even have dreamed of being capable of doing. And so again, just because God doesn't rebuke it or, or speak against it in the Old Testament does not mean that it isn't wrong. Hey, I would love for you to get your question answered. <laughs>